So good morning, Alberta. Today, we're, we're going to talk about hemp today and all things hemp. Uh, so we've brought on an expert uh, in hemp, uh, Wayne Jackson. Uh, Wayne Jackson is a chemical engineer based in Calgary. Uh, he's president of an executive management service, uh, consulting service, Cougar Stone Solutions. And he's also the primary processing project manager with Endless Sky Inc which is all about hemp right here in Calgary. Um, also with us, of course, is Chris Tasarski. Uh, Chris is a Calgary-based CEO of Salt Aqua Inc., a clean water technology company. So Wayne, I, I wanna to turn to you first, okay? And, and, and <laughs> what can you do with, uh, with hemp? There's a lot of myths about its qualities. Uh, what is this thing? What's it all about? What, what is, is this a product that can be a meaningful contributor to the Alberta economy? Well, thanks, Tron. Uh, it definitely can be, and I, I think it already is. Um, hemp means a lot of things to, to different people, and uh, so I try to, to break it down by, by some of what, what industry looks at as, as really uh, th three focuses, what they call fractions or the the, the health-based plant wellness that, that can come from, from the oils and the, and the, uh, of the hemp flower. Uh, sometimes that's also called uh, the flower, so flower and fractions. Then there's a the food aspect of it. So it, it generates a very high protein, uh, high dense uh, nutritional grain or seed. And, and that goes into food-based products. And then what I've been really interested in for the past while is the applications of the of the hemp stock itself, which is uh, it's a it's a its stem has actually two pieces to it, an inner an inner uh, core that uh, is is almost like a wood bark, and then the outer portion of the plant is is the uh, strongest natural fiber that 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 is on the planet and so there's just a tremendous amount of things that you can do with it some people say you know there's 20,000 50,000 applications of hemp and they're not wrong um, but as I'm sure we'll talk about a little later on this is actually a, an issue because um, you, you kind of have to pick one <laughs> and then what are you, what's your main focus going to be because you uh, although the plant can do so many things you you have to decide what your focus is going to be. Yeah, we, we, without a doubt, you know, you say there's 20,000 different ways of, of using hemp, but let's see if we can focus on a couple of them for a minute. And Chris, I'd really like to have your input on some of this, but you know, what's the economic uh, impact of hemp now in Alberta? And can it become an economic uh, uh, driver in, in the near future, you know, I, I don't want to talk about 50 years from now because, you know, there's a lot of stuff coming 50 years from now, as Chris well knows, <laughs> we've talked about many times, right? But right now, Alberta needs, to be frank, all the help it can get in terms of diversifying the economy. We're doing pretty good, contrary to popular opinion. But what about hemp in terms of economic driver? Yeah, I, I don't know, Chris, uh, if, if you want to jump in with any parts, feel free, but I, I did want to outline a little bit about what, what the hemp business is actually doing for Alberta and, and Western Canada right now, if I could, and then, you know, we can dive into some of those numbers if you want. So um, I, I tried to pull pull some data that, that I could speak towards. So, so hemp is a niche crop right now, um, but it is it is definitely an economic driver already, but I, I want to make a, you know, a focus, I guess, on the difference between hemp and cannabis. So cannabis, we all know, you know, Aurora, Tilray, Canopy, these big name companies that have been big drivers in the in the public space, and and you know, they're they're working with the cannabis plant as well on on the medicinal and and recreational side. But if we if we if we sub sector down to to just looking at industrial hemp, you know, this this has been a, an area of interest. You know, there's 
there's between 80 and 100,000 acres of, of this crop grown across Canada every year, and it, it, it tends to be on the upswing. But when you look at the total acreage that's available across just Western Canada, that's a small drop in the bucket to the, you know, to the 100 million acres that, that, that Western Canada has access to in arable land. In terms of investment, you know, I, I picked out some numbers here and, and uh, you know, 2011 was really where, where investment started to happen. The, the Alberta government invested in a, in a pilot research facility in, in Vagerville that's still there and running. Uh, and it was about a $5 million investment. And things really started to pick up between 2017 and 2020 when companies started to really look at the at the food aspect it, it had really been focused in manitoba up until then but but at that point some alberta companies really really started to come in you know, there's a company uh, biocomposites group out of drayton valley that has invested you know in, in the neighborhood of 10 million dollars into the Drayton Valley area and are, are probably the leading biocomposites uh, uh, manufacturer focused on hemp in, in the world. They're, they're definitely globally known. Um, there's been 20 to $30 million of investment from two Alberta companies. Uh, the one I'm involved with, Endless Sky Inc. Uh, so they're involved in hemp extraction. So extracting flour for CBD oil. And another Alberta-based company, Blue Sky Hemp Ventures, uh, also, you know, between the two of them, they've raised between 20 to $30 million uh, of capital from friends, family, high net worth individuals. So we're really on the, the front end of the investment spectrum there. And these companies, uh, Blue Sky started in the food side, but, you know, all of us are in discussions all the time about, about food and fiber applications as well as extraction. And uh, then just in, in the past week, a, a company from, from Bruderheim named uh, Canadian Rockies Hemp Corporation just landed an $18 million investment from a private equity firm out of New York called Merida. And, and so that company has been active in the entire cannabis space for, for the last decade. You know, so these are, are really important signals to the investment community that, that there is, uh, you know, there, there's uh, money to be made and there's, there's drivers coming from this area. And all those investments, you know, are, are focused here in Alberta and in, in Saskatchewan. Um, so, you know, so it's already an economic driver, but it could go much, much bigger. The uh, Canadian Hemp Trade Alliance talks about uh, this being a billion dollar industry uh, within the next five years in Canada. And so where are we at right now? Well, we've got uh, in 2018, there was $150 million generated in sales with about two thirds of that as export just focused in hemp. In 2019, uh, reports suggest that there was $140 million just in exports coming out of the hemp industry. Now, in five years, to get to a billion dollars, we're talking about massive growth. And there is massive growth potential, um, but there's also some, some barriers that, that we need to overcome. So... <laughs> So here's a thought, Tron, do you know that I have this hashtag, um, you know, hashtag, I want my money back um, yes. from the from the government, yeah. or, well, it's directed to the provincial government, uh, meaning the money that the federal government gave us. So, so here's the thing. So we have a project down in uh, Montana, where our company treats wastewater from an oil battery, we use the water for of all things, cattle ranching, okay, so the cattle drink the water from the oil battery. So <laughs> now this was a basically a dead field. Um, they brought it back. They put some oil wells on it. It's producing oil. Uh, we're doing the water side. Tremendous opportunity. The rancher's land value has now gone from about $500 an acre to $5,000 an acre US because she's got water for her cattle. So, you know, I noodle around at nighttime when I'm going to bed, trying to think of these things and to put out some tweets. Um, and basically, you know, where's, where's our money, right? The government sent us a whole bunch of money to reclaim wells, 
to look for opportunities in, in things that needed to be done in the oil patch. We've got a bunch of people sitting around saying, you know, what are we going to do? The sky is falling. And I'm looking at this and saying, wait a second. You know, if I can make water that's good enough for cattle to drink off an oil battery, surely, okay, we can provide water from these wells that need to be repurposed, that need to be reclaimed and optimized, that we could use it for hemp. So we started looking into this, Wayne, actually down in our oil property in Southern Alberta. And it's one of the things that I'm interested in, in hearing from you because you're the expert in it. But I look at this and say, why could we not be using water Okay, wastewater, treating that and then using that to grow hemp, because I can tell you a barrel of hemp <laughs> is worth a lot more than 50 bucks US, right? So, and I, and I don't pretend to be an expert on the processing costs and everything else, but I imagine they may not be as much as it is for me to get a barrel of oil out of the ground. So therefore your operating costs to produce a barrel of hemp okay, in my mind is an enormous economic opportunity for this, for this province. And, and Wayne was explaining to me about the land use prior to us getting on the Caltron, then how, you know, you don't have to grow the hemp in the greenhouses, you could grow hemp in, in, in land and in fields, right? And therefore, obviously, he just told us there's 100 million acres that's available. But I got thinking about that too. You know, here's a whole bunch of oil and gas wells when we had some wells up in, in Alberta, our ones down in southern in northern Alberta, our ones in southern are a little more shallow. You know, you're talking about fluid coming up from over a mile deep in the center of the earth, right? And this water is coming up with enormous heating value. And I, I don't know, Wayne, but obviously on a scale of greenhouses, for instance, that's something I think we could be looking for is the latent heat that's coming up from some of these wells and utilizing that. We can't obviously do large scale geothermal that may be gonna you know, take care of the city of Calgary. But if we were to be able to look at some greenhouse operations and growing industrial hemp, which seems to me to have a huge, huge market opportunity, that's how I think, Wayne, we could be ramping to a five-year plan to get to a billion dollars because we've been handed a whole bunch of money. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if we told Joe Biden what we we're going to start doing with you know, our old oil and gas properties up here in, in Alberta, that we're going to start growing some hemp and some crops and in treating the wastewater and using the deep uh, uh, bed uh, fluid for, for energy. Can, can you imagine how that might change the discussion yeah. in and around, um, you know, the pipelines and different things that we're trying to accomplish instead of just, you know, putting on our boxing gloves in the morning and fighting with him? You were saying export, Wayne. So is a bunch of that, so is a bunch of this crop then, would that be being exported to the United States? Yeah, that's for sure. So, so um, just to touch on some of the things you said, uh, what you're really talking about is building a circular economy where one, you know, where one activity feeds into another and the, the hemp plant is, is perfectly suited for that type of uh, an activity. And, and so the, the sharing of energy and the sharing of resources. And so ju just on that topic, you know, just back of the envelope calculations suggest that for every acre of hemp that you grow, you have the potential to sequester, you know, roughly that amount of, of carbon, right? Because you're, you're taking carbon out of the atmosphere and sequestering it in a plant. And this can, this can sequester, you know, upwards of four tons an acre of, of carbon out of the atmosphere. And what you do with it depends on, on how permanently sequestered it is. And, and construction material is one of the biggest things that, that uh, the industrial hemp can be used to make. And there's, you know, there's companies here in Alberta that are, are, are set on coming up with new innovative ways of, of doing construction much higher R values, you know, much better uh, housing quality than doing stick build houses at, at roughly the same cost. And so once you start doing these things, they start feeding into each other. And so you can be taking that energy and sequestering carbon and, and having an actual impact on, on the, the positive impact on the ecosystem. So there's the sky's the limit, really. Well, and endless sky, as you. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So you've got blue sky and there endless was, sky. Yeah. There was an opening, and I took it right. So, um, like that's. So here's 
like you said, Wayne, you know, three three middle-aged white guys sitting around talking about cannabis, right? And you know, we we probably aren't getting the same salaries, you know, as they are up in Edmonton. So, you know, and and the same benefits. Um, so, you know, here we are having this discussion. So why, what, you know, this is the kind of thing that we need to be talking about in this province, right? Because, and especially if now you're saying one of our major export markets is the United States, right? So the United States is, is, is taking in our product and probably could take in even more of our product. Europe, we know, is going to more sustainable building practices. So. So are they building, uh, is it like planks and, and boards that they build from the fiber or bricks or, I mean, I'm fascinated. So yes, uh, yes. Like, yeah, amazing. Yes, yes, and yes. So, um, wow. so, so you can basically take these stocks and compress them into boards and then it's the equivalent of a, an OSB type of a process. Um, you can you can do air lay with these things and and make composite materials out of them. I, I guess even the boards would be considered a composite. Um, and there's a company here in in a, uh, just outside of Calgary in Airdrie, uh, the uh, just biofiber, and they've made uh, masonry blocks. So you mix lime and and hemp herd, and they've got you know the the process down, and you you build that over a over a, a frame that can hold structure and you you go and build whole homes out of this which was a real stumbling block for for hemp in the past because most of the hempcrete that you make well all of it is is not structurally it, it doesn't hold structure but what these guys did was found a way to make masonry blocks that hold structure and you and you end up using a post tensioning system to build homes, uh, commercial buildings. And so this is, you know, the, the plan that Canadian Rockies hemp has is to actually make their facility out of hemp. And so, so they will actually be building the facility out of the products that, that they will eventually be selling. So, so this is the, you know, the power of this circular economy that we talk about. It's different than, you know, a lot of the principles of oil and gas apply from, you know, primary processing to, to refining to, to uh, manufacturing processes, but it tends to be much more built on distributive uh, manufacturing. So, so, you know, you could build a, a processing facility basically in every township. And, and so there's a, you know, a thousand townships across Alberta that, that this could fit. And each of those would need between 20 and, and, and $50 million of investment. So right there is 20 to $50 billion of investment that's required, but it has to be driven by the market. So there has to be a market pull. And this is the biggest issue right now in hemp is we have to disrupt existing supply chains. And, you know, it's, it's almost a separate issue than what, than what the oil and gas business had, because, you know, in the old days, I mean, I worked in oil and gas, you, you drilled your well, you put it on production and, and you tied it into the nearest uh, outlet and, and you had a market. But in, in hemp, you've got to build the market from the ground up. And so we need to find where are those pulls coming from. And right now it's, it's construction and it's CBD. And these are, the, these are the places that are saying we can be more sustainable and, and let's get after it. And you're saying too, in the food uh, side, the hemp, I think, like, I think we have some hemp seeds at our house uh, for or something. There's some hemp hearts or some sort of thing we got at Costco. That's right. Um, and, and, and that's, you know, with protein and healthy food and so, all the rest of it. So obviously, like you're saying, in some of these smaller little cities, if you could have the manufacturing facility, and then obviously now you're employing some people to make products, food products or whatever, and then those can be exported. That's you know, right. Japan, Japan what, I don't know if they still are, and, 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 and that's something I'd, I'd like to investigate, but the whole pine beetle thing, right? I mean, of all things, which was horrible. I mean, it was a disaster. Um, and, and not for one minute am I saying, wow, isn't that great? This all worked out. But I do know that Japan and Asia were taking a lot of that pine beetle wood for specialty stuff, right? Because it had weird patterns and different things in it, and so it was attractive to them. So in, in my mind, like we we're just talking about, there just seems to be such a drive towards sustainability. I don't, I don't think, again, that 
um, you know, we're going to be probably, we're not tolerating a lot of oil and gas related things, certainly globally, that's changing exponentially. And I, and I would argue that the same thing would be happening with clear cutting, you know, as well. I think there's less and less people interested in that. And I know we've, we've taken great steps to improve our logging, but it would just seem to me that if you have the opportunity to utilize an enormous amount of acreage, which leaves the forests to regenerate themselves properly, and now you're able to offset some of that logging practices, which are obviously meeting with some uh, uh, resistance in, in some cases. And now you're able to you know, supplant that with a hemp product that may in fact be even better, okay, than what you're using in your construction practices. Um, again, like you're creating a market, right? But this is the discussion that needs to be created around building a future for Alberta. That's that right. doesn't necessarily have to, you know, revolve around pipelines and, you know, drilling more wells and trying to figure out what we did right in the 50s. That's okay, right. we need to be taking a look at the future. And to me, this just seems like one of those things that we could be doing, which is involving, you know, some of the operational people, some of the expertise, the engineering, the exactly. processing, like you were saying, utilizing and optimizing old oil and gas fields, which then in turn can be used for uh, different purposes like the agriculture. Like to me, that's a massive, massive opportunity for us. And, and Tron, I wanna post it again with hashtag, I want my money back, right? Because they're obviously not taking a look at this and they need to be talking to a guy like Wayne who could be saying, look, here's an, here's an enormous opportunity for you. Your background's in oil and gas, so like, like me, you understand how these operations work. I just think there's tremendous opportunity. And imagine if you gave that message to Ottawa or to Washington or to anywhere around the globe, that That's this right. is a, yeah, we're still doing our oil and gas stuff, but here's what we're doing with it. That's you know, right. we can treat the water in the tailings ponds. You know that, Wayne. I mean, there's opportunities for us to do. Imagine if we we're growing hemp, you know, off of some of those oil sands operations and repurposing them for a crop. Yep. Right. And showing the world that we're doing environmental practices that give us a multi-billion dollar industry to boot. Yeah. And to you, offset losses in the oil and gas. I mean, I don't know. You hit the nail on the head, Chris. All of these skills are transferable between the forestry industry, the oil and gas industry. And I forgot to even plug, you know, I, I'm, I'm involved as a founder in a startup hemp paper company that we're just about to get off the ground. And we're going to be eating up the cannabis and hemp waste and mixing it with with uh you know with with some of the the pulp uh, products that are available and we'll be making sustainable packaging solutions to be used within the cannabis industry and so right. this is you know the it it the opportunities are endless yeah we're looking at a water project right now in mexico where we're going to take the wastewater we're going to treat the water we're taking all the waste that comes off of that the solid waste we stick it into a bioreactor and we create fuel from it Okay, so the whole project runs off its own energy. Well, at the end, you got a biochar. Guess what the biochar can do? Yeah, stick that back into the soil and now use that as a fertilizer. And here we go, right? A completely. <laughs> this is the circular economy. Yeah, this, so this is know, where we're headed. Wayne, this, I mean, I mean, I was thrilled. I mean, I just think there's just so many, so many opportunities here. I, I want to learn more. I've explored it, like I say, with our oil field that we have down in southern Alberta, and I think there's enormous opportunity there. Multiply that out by a thousand times easily, because we know there's well more than that properties around the province. And, and now Alberta suddenly is a leader, like a global leader in this stuff, Tron. Like, I, the, like you know, I, I don't know. Like, I just, anyway frustrating but you know i don't know if that'll work for post-secondary education either you know if the kids can come out and they can prove that their degree is good enough you know in the hemp industry if we'll fund their education either so who knows we got to get cracking that's what i would say and the world is moving and, and yeah well the ucp is uh, imploding as we speak they're not very united this morning so anyway maybe that'll fall apart and we have a chance hey so Anyway. So, a <laughs> uh, couple of couple of remarks on current news there. I see too. Right? Um, this this is absolutely fascinating. Lots of stuff that I certainly had no yeah. clue about. No idea. Um, Building yeah. stuff out of hemp. Who knew? Like um, this is incredible. 
Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I'm looking at the displacement of, of energy in terms of manufacturing as well. Uh, this is something we have to talk more about a little bit later. We're going to do it again. Maybe okay. we'll focus in on a couple of aspects of it. Wayne, I really want to thank you for this. Yeah. Wow. You know, and, and, and Chris, uh, I know that you're interested very deeply in this as well. So having said that, I, I thank both of you. We'll call it a day um, and we'll go from there. Really thanks. appreciate it. Thank yeah, you. Thanks a million, Wayne. Really appreciate it. We learned a ton. Thanks.